Hey everybody, happy Wednesday to you. Almost finished with Revelation. We're in Revelation 20. Actually, probably one of my favorite chapters to study in the book of Revelation. And I, I'm telling you, there's so many questions I have out of this chapter. The abyss. Let's talk about the abyss. Like, what is this place that isn't a place? What is this place that is outside the presence of God? And all of the things related to the abyss and how all of that works. That's just crazy. And then you talk about the millennium. Okay, is there really a physical millennium or is that something we've already seen or is it something going on now? Is it a spiritual millennium? What is that all about? And this thousand years. I mean, most of the time you try to take the word of God at its word, literally, but what is that millennium and how does that work? And Jesus is reigning during the millennium. So he's living on earth, even though he is throned in heaven, how that figures into the place. And then the second death, the great white throne of judgment. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And then the lake of fire. All of those subjects, probably bigger than we could really fathom, even though we can learn about them on earth Obviously, John records them, so we're supposed to learn something from them. Well, John chapter 20, my verse and theme is out of verse 12. So I got my coffee, and I've been, I've been studying through this again with you. And thanks again for sharing this navigation, this journey with me through Revelation. Today, the theme I came up with was books. I really wanted to dig into that again. So it says in verse 12, I saw the dead standing before the great white throne, and books, plural, were open. There, we know about one of the books. One of the books is the book of life. If your name is not in the book of life, if it's been blotted out, you are not permitted access to the holy uh, throne of heaven. You are cast out of the presence of God. But there must be other books. So here's, here's some books that might be some of those books opened because they're recorded in scripture. Maybe there's a book of thoughts. Romans chapter 2 verse 15 says, you know, your conscience and your thoughts will be judged. So maybe all, would that be scary? All of our thoughts are recorded. What we were thinking good, what we were thinking not so good. And then our words, Matthew 12, 13, by your words, you will be judged. Every word matters. And so your words would be recorded. Wow. I'm not sure I want my words recorded. <laughs> Your secrets, according to Romans 2.16, Ecclesiastes 12.14, your secrets and your hidden thoughts, what you're holding back from people are, are recorded in books. And your works, obviously, are recorded in books. We know that. 2 Corinthians 11.15, Matthew 16.27, he says, you, you, your works will be recorded. You will be rewarded according to your works. And then finally, this one maybe you hadn't thought of, Psalm, uh, Psalm 56, 8, I think it is, says uh, your emotions are captured by God. He captures every tear. He knows your pain and your emotions, and he records us. And all of that, and probably much, much more, are recorded as a part of the books that document our life. And here's the greatest thing about that. The same God that that can blot out our name from the book of life if we choose not to accept him as our Lord and Savior, is also the same God that turns around and blots out all of the wrong and the evil and the failure points in every other book. So that either your record shows all of your sins or it shows none of them. I think that's pretty amazing. I'm, I'm so grateful, not because of anything I've done, but because of Jesus and his death on the cross, that we have our name in the book of life. It's not been blotted out. In fact, what has been blotted out is every one of our sins. As far as the east is from the west, so far as God separated us from our sin. The great white throne is the judgment seat of, is the final judgment for all those who have fallen short of God. We have in scripture a couple of these, these things described. There's the judgment seat of Christ, which, which we come before as believers to receive our salvation when we die. And then we have the great white throne judgment, which is the final judgment for all those who are not believers, who've been waiting for the end of the earth and the creation of the new world to happen so that their judgment can happen. They are cast out into hell 
for the second death. And I'm telling you, that may sound, you know, okay for some people in your life, but it's terrible. It's the last place we want anyone to go. And it's the destiny of some who won't accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. So here's another chance. Remember, I told you this in the past about interludes and other places. It seems like every single story in Revelation ends with this call to surrender to Jesus. And I would encourage you today, if you're listening to this and you've never done it, to turn back to him, to repent of your sin, turn back to his ways instead of your own, and receive him with the confession of faith. I, that's the one that we give from Peter. I believe with all my heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Confess that with me. And then be baptized, experiencing the symbol, symbolic and spiritual death, burial, and resurrection of your life, walking away, written in the book of life, ready to receive your eternity. God bless you as you do. Tomorrow, Revelation 20 and 21. Sorry, it's combined into one day, but we'll talk about heaven as we close out our study on Revelation and the New Testament. I'll look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day.